Welcome back to The Bad Chef. Um, I know we're in between seasons at the moment, but I wanted to film a couple of shorts just to keep you guys entertained in the meantime. Um, so these shorts, they're going to be kind of like the main episodes, except there's no script, there's no real editing, there's no music, there's no real recipe. Basically, it's nothing like the main episodes. Um, but hopefully these shorts will cover some of the things that I still want to show you guys, but they're too small to make into a full episode. So hopefully we can do that. Anyway, yeah, welcome to the bad shorts. So for the first short that I want to film today, I want to cook something, well, not cook, but make something that's like a quick side that goes well with any sort of Mediterranean meal, especially with Italian, because what we're making today is bruschetta. Now, traditionally in its simplest form, bruschetta is just bread rubbed with a bit of garlic and served with salt and olive oil. But in Australia, bruschetta is also synonymous to a tomato salad that is commonly served with that contains, well, tomatoes, basil, a bit of pepper, garlic, olive oil, and also a bit of optional balsamic. So we're going to make that today. Now, making bruschetta is really easy. Basically, you just chop everything up and jumble it together. But I'm going to introduce a few more techniques to this one that I like to do that I find actually makes a difference in the flavor. So um, let's get chopping the tomatoes first. I'm using trust tomatoes, slightly, you know, firm ones, not too ripe. Um, yeah, let's dice these bad boys up. How to dice a tomato is actually really easy. All you have to do is just to cut it in a grid shape across the top, but not all the way through. Turn it on its side and then just slice down through it and then you'll get a perfectly diced tomato. So the way not to cut all the way through is to let your tip of the knife hit the board, but not the back of the knife. So you just cut down with confident strokes <laughs> through the tomato, turn it sideways, and then just confident strokes on the way down. Right, so once you've got a tomato like this that's hedgehogged, just Turn it over onto its side like this, and then just cut confidently through the top of it, and then work your way towards the base. And now you have your diced tomato here. Now, we're not getting rid of the cap, because the cap, there's plenty of tomato there as well. So we're just gonna run through it with our knife, turn everything along its side, and then just run it through like that again. Now, you want to get rid of this green bit in the middle because that's nasty and no good to eat. So, that's the rest of the cat diet. Just put it all into a bowl like this. Nice. At this point in time, I find that it's a good idea to salt and pepper your tomatoes. The flavors will penetrate a bit more because it's left in there for a bit longer. Now the next part is to handle the basil. Now, how much basil to use? All of it. So with the basil, all you have to do is to tear the leaves off it by holding onto the end and just pushing down like that. So you'll get most of it. If you don't like these like smaller stems, you can just chuck them out as well. Don't be too particular about it. This is supposed to be fast and cheap cooking. So they're all our basil leaves. Now, the next technique that I'm gonna show you is something called chiffonade, right? To chiffonade something is to roll something up into a small cigarette-like sort of thing and then slice it finely. Um, the reason why we do a chiffonade for basil leaves is that they bruise really easily if you press them too hard. So by rolling it up into a, a cigarillo sort of looking thing, it gives a little bit of resistance and allows the knife to drop through instead of like smacking against the board and bruising everything. So, this will make for tastier basil. So, how to chiffonade. After you've rolled it up into like a cigarette, just, you know, just rock back and forth over it. And there you have it. Um, somewhat successfully chiffonaded basil. Chiffonading in theory actually does make the basil taste better, but also I've got a heap of it to get through so I really can't be screwed. So I'm just gonna run the knife through it like this and then hope for the best. Fuck you, man. It's my kitchen. I do what I want. And plus, at the end of the day, I'm gonna be the one eating this. So I don't care if my basil isn't chiffonated perfectly. Anyway, there we go. That's our basil badly done, but it's done regardless. 
So, fuck it. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take the basil and just plop it over the top of the tomatoes. The next technique that I want to show you is an Asian cooking technique. In Cantonese, it's called zanyao. I don't know what it is in European, but it involves heating up a bunch of oil and then pouring that oil directly on top of some aromatic herbs like spring onions or ginger, or in our case, basil. And the reason why it does this is that the heat of the oil just cauterizes everything, dissolves the flavor on the top, and then pushes it all the way down. So it kind of percolates the flavor really well. So yeah, I find that it releases a lot more flavor out of the basil this way. So that's why I do it. All right, first things first, we have to crack open a bunch of garlic. In terms of how much garlic you want to use, fucking heaps is the right answer. Don't sting yourself out with like two cloves or something like that. Nah, fuck that. Give yourself something like four cloves. If not even the whole entire garlic, you'd be that freaky. And trust me, I am a freak like that. Mm, hell yeah. Give it a bit of a press with the knife, just so that they're free of the skins and everything that we put into the mincer is entirely 100% edible. So that's what I like to do. Right. Next step, whack on a small pan onto the stove. Give it a decent amount of olive oil. Don't be stingy with it. Now, the thing about this is that you don't want it to be piping hot or smoking hot because that will just burn the garlic. So what you actually want to do is just to get this medium hot so you see a few bubbles forming on the bottom and that should be it. What we want to do is turn off the heat and just press your garlic into the oil. Alright, so at this moment, your garlic should be bubbling a little bit in the pan. So if it's a little bit too cold, just whack it back whack it back on the heat and uh, heat it up until it's starting to show the first signs of browning. Mmm, smell that, smell that. You see how the edges are starting to brown a little bit? It's time to turn it off. All right, so get your big bowl of basil and tomato and then this oil just pour over the top, beautiful. And all of this perfectly browned garlic. Just pop it in like that. And the final part of this is just to give this a good old mix. You ready? Mmm. Yeah. You hear that? That's what good cooch sounds like. All right. The last part is just to toast up some bread and then be done with it. So just before serving this, don't forget, a little bit of balsamic as well. You don't need a lot, you just only need maybe like a swirl. And that just gives it that extra little hit that it's asking for. It needs a little bit more pepper, it needs a little bit more salt. All right, so to serve this, all we have to do is just, mm, Spoon it over the top. And then a little bit of cracked pepper over the top, just as decoration. And that's done. I'm going to cut this in half because I don't trust myself like that. But all that there's left to do is to enjoy it. Bone at the beef. Mmm. Mmm.